The longer one walks this Christian path, the more one immerses themselves in this deep and flowing tradition, the more aware one becomes that it is all about living within the mysterious tangle of life and death. One of my favorite writers is the Cistercian monk from Australia, Michael Casey. He puts it this way. One thing I have found necessary for myself is to keep in mind the fundamental dialectic of life and death in the Christian experience. There can be no genuine spirituality that does not take seriously the gospel imperative of the Paschal mystery. We enter life through the doorway of death. It could be said that it involves a loss of self. I think Brother Casey captures it right there. The Paschal mystery, this horrible wonder that lies at the heart of the Christian tradition, this mystery that we take a week every year to remember and which we celebrate every Sunday, this dynamic dance of death and life shapes our lives. We find this dy dynamic not just in our own lives and in the people around us and within our communities, but we see it in the earth. We see it in nature all around us. And according to the astrophysicists, it's written into the very fabric of the cosmos. In this passage from John's gospel, people from all parts of the world want to see Jesus, signaling in this story that John's telling that Jesus' ministry is complete now. All people are being drawn to him, as he says will happen in verse 32. These Greeks represent all of the people of the world, everyone who will come to this universal experience of life and death that Jesus embodies. This moment is the culmination of his ministry. The rest of the story in John is about the passion. At this moment, when you might say, all of the world is watching, Jesus sums it up for them. He tells us what it's all about and he says this, very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Why on earth would anybody walk all the way to Jerusalem to hear that? Why do we keep coming back to it? Why do you? Why do you go to church and listen to some version of this Sunday after Sunday? What is it about this upside down view of life that draws us in, as Jesus says, that drags us towards it? Because it's true. Because it resonates with our experience. It resonates with what we know to be true in our own lives what we know to be true in the earth around us. We might want to run away from it, hide from it, deny it, blame other people when it happens, but deep down inside, our spirits are aware that we are enveloped in a sacred mystery of life and death. And this is not like Odysseus, caught between the Scylla and Carbides, almost crushed by two overwhelming forces. It's more like a dance, or I guess actually it's more like a seed. That's what Jesus says it's like. Biblical scholars call these images Jesus uses agrarian metaphors as if the image was simply an illustration interchangeable with other illustrations, as if it would be equivalent for Jesus to say, every drop of gasoline must be burned in the engine for the car to move. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't find that a very compelling image of anything. <laughs> Jesus wasn't simply using farming and gardening metaphors to illustrate spiritual truths. They're not just metaphors. <laughs> the image and the truth are inseparably bound to each other. The grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies and brings forth much fruit. It's not a metaphor. It really happens. 
The seed does not have to represent anything else because it embodies the truth. The son of man falls into the arms of the earth and brings forth new life. I will die and live on in some capacity in the future. The cosmos, after the Big Bang, reversed its move toward darkness and brought forth matter and light and life. It's not a metaphor. It's a process. And Jesus wasn't just talking about himself. We are all participants in this mystery. In the passage I quoted a few minutes ago from Michael Casey, he says that genuine spiritual growth requires that we take this mystery seriously, that we live it, that we let it shape the way we see our lives, the way we see the world around us, the way we envision our future. It's been my own experience in my own personal spiritual journey, but also in the lives of people I've tried to help along this path that the main barrier to spiritual growth is that we don't take this mystery seriously enough. We want the life, but we avoid the dying. We cling, we hang on, we build entire identities around a false self and then refuse to let it go when it is destroying us or when it's harming the people around us. Our social nightmares, our war on nature are all rooted in the denial of this Paschal mystery, this swirling, troubling, beautiful mystery. When we stampede toward the resurrection, when we try to find our way too fast to new life and eternal happiness and we skip over the death and the loss, the odds are good that we're not taking this mystery seriously when we think that we should be happier than we are. The odds are good we're denying this reality. When we seek technological mastery over nature and over each other, we defy this divine process of life. When we blame someone else for a lack of spiritual progress in our own lives or in the lives of our children, we're probably not living into this mystery. After Jesus reminds everyone the heart of the mystery, that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Right after that, he says, now my soul is troubled. This mystery is troublesome. As much as we can trust it, as much as we can see it, as much as we want to give ourselves to it, we can feel it in our bones that it is right but it still troubles us and it troubled him. I would love to be able to tell you that we can resolve this tension, that you can dispel the trouble and live only in the life, but I can't do that. But Jesus helps us. Jesus helps us here. He guides us. He shows us what to do. Although troubled in soul, he gives himself to this mysterious tangle of life and death. And he does it with wonder and gratitude, or to use his word, with glory. The only response to this mystery of life and death, of order and disorder, this process that we see all around us, the only response is wonder and gratitude. In doing so, we give glory to God and we find our true selves.